Super 35 or APS-C, sometimes when YouTubers are doing their reviews on these camera systems, they make it sound like it's such a dirty word. They often would say, but it's APS-C. Yeah, you're an APS-C, but you can't afford full frame or you don't have that full frame money. And in today's video, we're going to talk about APS-C, more specifically APS-C lenses for the brand new Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. In fact, it's not just for the Mark II, it's for the Mark I, it's also for the A6700, the FX30, basically any APS-C camera system by Sony. And there's a ton of lenses to talk about, both from Sony as well as third party, because not only is APS-C affordable, but the E-mount system makes so many lenses from APS-C as well as full frame accessible to the APS-C system. So it's kind of impossible for me to highlight like all of the lenses that's available. I'm just going to highlight a few of the popular ones. We're gonna base them on performance, affordability, and as well as quality. But if there's a lens that you have come across or you're using that is worth noting, please comment in the comment section below. I would love to know what you're using. So first up, let's talk about vlogging lenses and we're gonna talk about the Sony options. The first one is the 11 millimeter F 1.8. And this is sort of a budget option when it comes to Sony lenses. This lens is compact and small, lightweight. So when it comes to vlogging, you always want something that's a little bit wider. So I, as first choice, would go for the 11 millimeter F 1.8 because that's a great all round vlogging lens. Second to that, also another Sony lens, the 50 millimeter F 1.4. So this is a premium lens. So the reason why this would be my second choice is because of the field of view. It's a 15 millimeter, so it's not as wide as you would like it for a vlogging lens. But I think the plus side is that f1.4 aperture that you're getting with it. So you're getting a lot more bokeh with that lens as well as background separation. And it's a much better lens in terms of low light performance. A couple of third party options to mention. The first one is the Voltrox 30 millimeter f1.4. I like this lens because it's a nice compromise between the first two that I mentioned. It's a 13 millimeter f1.4, so you're getting the wider field of view as well as better low light performance with that faster aperture. The second option that I would go for is the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, and I'm currently filming on the 16 mm f1.4. And why I would choose this lens is because it's a tried and trusted lens. It's got great autofocus as well as the faster aperture. There's better low light performance as well as good background separation. And you can also use this as a photography lens if you want to. So a bonus mention is a Samyang 12 millimeter F2. So I haven't used this lens personally, but I've seen this lens come up a couple of times. And why I mention this lens is because the wider field of view, as well as the price point on this lens is a lot better. With F2, I think you're not getting as much low light performance as well as very little background separation when it comes to that, that aperture. But I think it's a nice compromise because it's also much smaller and it's a great compromise option for those that are on a budget. As far as portraiture lenses are concerned, there is a ton that you can choose from. In fact, there's a combination between APS-C lenses as well as full frame lenses that you can use. And it's just the benefit of the E-mount system. If you're going for any of the full frame lenses, no matter what it is, you're gonna get a lot more reach with it because of the smaller sensor. For instance, if you're using a 35 millimeter full frame lens, you have to times that by 1.5, which is in the range of about 50 millimeters. So a couple of options for portraiture on the APS-C system, I can recommend anything from the 35 millimeter f1.8. This is not a G Master lens, it's just a standard lens. It's a tried and trusted lens and you're going to get good performance with that. I can also recommend the G Master version, which is the 35 millimeter f1.4. Reason being is that you're getting good background separation and really fast aperture with that 35 millimeter G Master lens, but expensive 
but worth the investment. You can also look at the 50 millimeter F1.4. You can also look at the 85 millimeter F1.4. And if you're also on a budget, you can go for the 85 millimeter F1.8, also another tried and trusted lens. And sometimes these non G master lenses perform a lot better than the than the G Master counterpart. So I would definitely look at those. So a couple of third party options uh, for APS-C lens, specifically talking about those ones, the Sigma 56 millimeter F1.4, also a tried and trusted lens. You won't go wrong with that for portraiture. There's also the Voltrox 56 millimeter F1.4. So when it comes to zoom options, there's also a variety of lenses that you can use. There is the Sigma 10 to 18 millimeter f2.8. This is also a great vlogging lens if you want some versatility when it comes to having a zoom lens. Then there's the 18 to 50 millimeter f2.8 also by Sigma that you can look at. These two lenses will cover you a lot in terms of the range that you're looking for from vlogging and also for photography and then there's also finally the sony 10 to 18 millimeter f4 and talking about f4 there's also the kit lens that you get with the sony zve 10 mark ii it's the 16 to 50 millimeter f 3.5 to f 5.6 it's only a hundred dollars more when you're buying a brand new zve 10 mark ii but if you're in a market for uh, other lenses, you're looking to expand your lens options, these are all the lenses that I can definitely recommend. If you have any other options or suggestions that you came across, I mean, like I can sit here the whole entire day talking about lenses, but these lenses are the best options in terms of price, quality, and also performance. You can't go wrong with any of these lenses. If you wanna go check them out, all of the links is in the description down below. If you like this video, you like the channel, you like the content, I would recommend or ask you to please subscribe to the channel. And also hit me in the comments. I would love to hear where you're from, what you're doing, are you a photographer, are you a vlogger, whatever the story might be, I would love to hear from you. And if you got to this part of the video, I just wanna thank you for watching the video. But other than that, hope I see you in the next video. Cheers, man.